family greetings in the mighty name of jesus christ amen it is such a pleasure to have you with me right here before we go any further let us just commit this uh, small wonderful program to the lord jesus christ so that he leads us and he guides your heart into all truths according to his desire that he has upon your life let us pray wherever you are father we thank you I pray for anybody and everybody who is watching me from wherever they are. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for the blessing of the Lord in their families, for the blessing of the Lord in their homes, for the blessing of the Lord in their houses, for the blessing of the Lord in everything that they are doing. Father, in these times that are tough, in these times that are uncertain, but I come to you, my Lord Jesus Christ, and I say with your right hand that is power, you are able to manifest your grace, your provision, and your power in their homes and do things that no eye has ever seen in the name of Jesus. I speak blessings upon everybody that is watching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right. I'm not going to waste too much of our time. This is um, a beautiful, beautiful program that I have for you today. We are just going to, you are asking, what is it? We are just going to engage into the word of God. So as the, as the Lord by the Holy Spirit allows us to, to, to meet as often as we can, I'm just going to be throwing these um, videos that are going to help you spiritually. What, what's the purpose of these, of these videos, of these teachings? Is to grow you in the Word. Is to teach you the nuggets of the Word of God. There are small little things that are hidden in the Word of God that if you are able to articulate and apply and, and implement in your life, you are going to start seeing your life changing slowly but surely. To some of you, depending on how well you apply the word of god even in a speedy way because the, the bible says for the lord will answer in a speedy way so we also don't want to run away from the fact that god has set this program to make sure that everything that you have been praying for in your life the prayers that you've been praying for a long time are now about to be answered but by the word of god i want you to understand it's very important that we pray it's very important that we declare it's very important that deliverance is conducted it's very important that prophecies are given but I want you to understand one thing that God wants you to be friends with, one thing that God wants you to live by is the word of God. The, the, Jesus himself says, man shall not live by bread alone. So it's very important for you to understand that God wants you to apply the word of God in everything that you're going to be doing. So the purpose of these teachings is to try and help you to break down the word of God. Some of you that remember, we had these books that uh, we, we had that are called Nuggets of the Truth, where we would simplify the complexity of the Word of God. We would simplify the Word of God to, to break it so that it is able to be chewed by you. You are able to digest it. You are able to apply it. Many people start the Word of God and they don't understand. So what does this mean? So this is the reason why we are, we are having these programs to look into the Word of God and break the Word and help you grow in the things of God. So without wasting too much time, let us jump into the Word. What I'm going to focus on today is a very, very, very powerful but simple scripture. I looked at it a little bit on Sunday. It's the book of John 3, um, uh, the verses 5. John 3, the verses 5. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6, very important. This is where we are going to focus today. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. This is very simple. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. So if you look at where we are right here, Jesus is trying to tell you that there are two kinds of people. The first kind of, of, of people that are out there are people born of flesh. That means you have got, you can trace who your mother is. You can trace who your biological father is. You can trace that since you are flesh, so you are also born of flesh. So this is not complicated at all. Every person that is walking on earth, every person that is on earth, except Adam, of course, and Eve, but we are just talking in a general way of sharing light. Every person has got a mother. Every person has got a father. So this is what Jesus is talking about. Everybody who is born of flesh is flesh. So the moment you came out of your mother's womb, you came out as flesh. But Jesus goes on to say something that is very powerful. And that is very unique. And that is a mystery. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. As if to say, you can categorize people to say there are people born of mothers who are fleshly and fathers who are fleshly. 
So those people are flesh. But you also can come up with a, with a, a unique type of people that are born of spirit. Who are these kind of people? What does it mean to be born of spirit? I've explained without wasting too much time to say what does it mean to be born of flesh. I also want to engage you to what, is, what does it mean to be born of spirit. So the Bible tells us that God is a spirit. And Jesus is saying that which is born of spirit is spirit. So in other words, we are being told that God embarked or introduced a system, a spiritual system that is supposed to be lived on earth where he is spirit, but he gives birth to spiritual beings. So what are these spiritual beings? So here is the secret. God is spirit. And for you to be a child of God, you then become spirit. So if God, if your mom is flesh and she gives birth to you, and Jesus says that which is born of flesh is flesh. So we need to understand who is that that is spirit that gives birth to spiritual beings. So God is spirit. And the moment you become a child of God, the moment you become a child of God, you now become spirit. You no longer are flesh. This is one secret that many Christians have not mastered to live with. Many Christians, even though they have received Jesus Christ, they continue to live fleshly. They continue to think fleshly. They continue to allow fleshly things to affect them. Not realizing that when you receive Jesus Christ, you have been empowered to be transitioned from a flesh person, from a flesh child who is birthed by your mother to a spiritual child who is birthed by God. So, this transaction alone, if well understood and well applied, it destroys demonic outers from your mother's side of the family and father's side of the family. Because demonic outers from your mother's side of the family and father's side of the family are powerful because they are demonic outers that are under fleshly laws, fleshly activities. The reason why these outers even exist is fleshly people got engaged into certain things. And these demonic spirits then started following you, whatever sinem or totem that you have. They had the right to follow you by virtue of being a fleshly person that belongs to this fleshly family. So by virtue of receiving Jesus Christ, there's a spiritual transaction that happens immediately. The Bible says, glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ, who has transitioned us, who has conveyed us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of love or the kingdom of the son of love. So the moment you receive Jesus Christ, you are immediately transitioned from being a, a person owned by a fleshly mother or a fleshly father to a person owned by a, fleshly by a spiritual father, which is God. Quickly go to the book of John 1. Uh, uh, John 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh. Okay, let's read verse 12. I think I'll concentrate on verse 14 another day. Let's read verse 11 and 12. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as, as, as have received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. So the moment you receive Jesus Christ, it looks like it's an ordinary thing that is happening. But here is the explanation in the spirit. The moment you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, the Bible is saying on verse 14, but as many as received him, that means the moment you receive him, to them he gave the right, the right. Think of your rights as a citizen of the nation from wherever you're watching me from. You've got the right to get land. You've got the right to get your ID. You've got the right to, to, to houses. You've got the right to clean water. At times it's said that our governments don't provide that. But these are the rights that citizens of nations, let's say you're a citizen of Zimbabwe, let's say you're a citizen of South Africa, a citizen of America, of the UK, you've got the right to take your children to good schools, the right to access uh, uh, medical hospitals. You, so you've got rights. So I'm not going to waste too much time. I think this teaching will be for about 10 to 15 minutes. So let me push it. So you do have rights as a citizen of a nation. The moment you receive Jesus Christ, verse 12 says he gave you the right to be a child of God. So you've got rights. Number one right is you are no longer flesh. Your spirit was your father is spirit. So drill that into your mind. Drill that into your heart. Many battles that you're fighting and you're failing to win is because you think you are flesh. But God told you in chapter 3 that that which is born of spirit is spirit. So education, number one, and empowerment, number one, of introduction to Christianity is learning to know that you are no longer flesh. You are now spirit. By thinking like that, by talking like that, by believing that, you position yourself to victory. You position yourself to power. 
You position yourself to authority. You position yourself to existing in a kingdom that has never faced defeat. You position yourself to fighting that sickness and you win it. You position yourself to fighting those battles. Whatever that you've been praying for it can be a job. It can be a career that you want to progress. It can be marriage. It can be children. It can be barrenness. Whatever that you are praying for, positioning number one is understanding you are no longer flesh. I wish from wherever you're watching me from, you could confess that right now and say, I'm no longer flesh, I'm spirit. And the devil wants you to continue believing that you are flesh. Because he knows as long as you are fighting your battles in the flesh, the devil has been given this physical world. So as long as you are fighting these, these battles with, a, with, with physical laws and physical principles, principles, you are going to be defeated by the devil because this world has been given to him. So physically, you are not going to outsmart the devil. Physically, you are not going to be wiser than the devil. Physically, you are, going, you are not going to be powerful more than the devil. So Jesus knew for us to be able to defeat the devil, he has to equip us. What did he do? For, to everybody who believed him, he gave the power to be children of God. So that means you and me, as Christians, we are spirit. This is the secret of being a Christian. This is the secret that we carry as Christians. So I want to finish this. But I am praying that you have understood that as I'm talking to you from this moment, if you never thought like this, now you understand that you are spirit. Your children are spirit. The house that you are living in, the job that you are working in, the car that you drive, these are things that are driven by, 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 by somebody who is a spirit. So this is... My God. So this is... So, so this is something that you need to understand. That you are spirit. Believe you are spirit. Believe your spirit because your father is spirit. A child of a God, a baby of a God is a baby God. A baby of a snake is a baby snake. A baby of an elephant is a baby elephant. A baby of a spirit. Right? Father, I thank you. I declare blessings in the homes of these people that are watching me. I thank you for favor. I thank you for the anointing that is going to touch their lives. Thank you for the testimonies, my Lord, that are going to come out of this teaching. Thank you for the empowerment that is going to come out of this teaching as they grow to be spiritual giants. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Till I see you again. God bless you. Bye-bye.